appreciates what you guys have done. Thank you so much for the kind words. And um, I, I don't know if people are very uh, familiar with the work you've done with the Recovery Act, but I know firsthand from the rank and file cops on the street what you've done for law enforcement on the local and state level. Well, I appreciate this. I, I think this has been sort of an untold story. Uh, last year when we came in, obviously we had a huge economic crisis. One of the things we were most worried about was how would this affect law enforcement? Because you started seeing state and local budgets hemorrhaging, and there were the prospects of tens of thousands of cops on the streets being laid off. Uh, and so what we did was, working with state and local governments, got $4 billion uh, in uh, additional funding so that we kept those law enforcement officials doing the great work that they do each and every day. Well, I know firsthand the law enforcement community respects you and, and is appreciative of you getting that bill through in these, in these tough economic times. I wanted to talk to you about the Adam Walsh Act. I had the great honor of on the 25th anniversary of our six-year-old son Adam's abduction, turning a horrible day into a positive day. My family was in the Rose Garden. Um, Elizabeth Smart was there. Many parents of murdered children when President Bush signed the bill. But the problem, of course, I know you're so well aware, and the problem that, that Vice President Biden and I face is focusing this Congress in on funding this act. Right. The problem is that the states are not becoming compliant mm -hmm. because they're afraid that the federal money won't come down. Right. I know you want to try to help get that money. Right. As a father, I, I can't thank you enough uh, for what you did uh, in memory of Adam. We have increased funding for the Adam Walsh Act uh, by 23%. The second thing we've done is we've uh, added an additional 100 U.S. Marshals to focus on this issue. We went from 300 to 400. The problem, as you well know, is you've got 150,000 uh, sex offenders out there that these U.S. Marshals have to chase down. And so it's very important for us to continue to build up the U.S. Marshals' capacity. That's something that we want to do uh, in our federal budget. We also want to provide some support for things like DNA testing at the state levels. You know, a lot of these uh, local law enforcement officials are distracted for some of the basic resources, getting the databases set up. Those are all areas where I think we can provide a lot of help. And my expectation is, is that we're going to get support, bipartisan support from Congress on this issue because it's so important to every family uh, across America. And there are just too many horror stories that uh, uh, you know, remind us that we're not doing that. The Marshals have done an outstanding job. The FBI has done an outstanding job with the Internet crimes right. portion of it with over 100,000 non-compliant level three sex offenders. Here's my commitment, John. Uh, we are going to do everything in our power as long as I'm in the White House and as long as I'm the father of two girls, to make sure that we're providing the states the support that they need to make this happen. The DNA portion of it is something that I hope to see in my lifetime, that every one of the states have uh, a DNA compliance. And now we have 18 states who are taking DNA upon arrest. England has done it for years. Um, it's no different than fingerprinting or a booking photo. Since those states have been doing it, it has cleared 200 people that are innocent from jail. I think that this is something this country has to deal with. It, it, it's the right thing to do. And then, as you well know, John, the, this is where the national registry becomes so important, making sure that not only are we getting these DNA uh, tests done state by state, but then nationally, everybody's talking to each other. That's how we make sure that we continue to tighten the grip around uh, folks who have uh, perpetrated these crimes. Very difficult for me in a country that has done so many great things and, and, and so many things that we look up to, the, the world looks up to us, that we don't have a DNA. No, it's, it, it's, it's, it's not acceptable. Uh, and I, as, you, as you said, this is something that should transcend party. Uh, you know, whatever your attitudes about uh, politics here in Congress, uh, Congress should be able to do this. So now you've got 23% increase uh, in funding for the Adam Walsh Act. Let's see if we can start building on that. Uh, five years down the road, we can look back and say, you know what, well, we've got a lot of stuff done, and we probably saved a lot of lives of, of innocent people and, and innocent children uh, from these predators. And I know you're a very loud voice for victims, which is much appreciated from the victim community. Well, you know, the uh, if you think 30 years ago, when these terrible crimes happened, uh, the victims were left to just deal with this on their own. And we insist on justice. That's what 
people need more than anything uh, is, so that they can stop feeling like victims and they feel like they've got some power. And you know, I think uh, your show helps people to do that. Uh, and, and so we want to build on that. But we also want to make sure that uh, some of the crimes that have been taking place of late financial crimes uh, in the area of mortgage fraud, for example, I just talked to the attorney generals there, we've already seen uh, a tripling of mortgage fraud cases over uh, the